give me 3 million and I give you 600 million return, does it make good investment or not? He said, Welcome to the Are We OK podcast, the podcast that talks about policies and ways that are relevant to you, the person on the street. My name is Ken Ming, and today we have a special guest with us, uh, none other than Aswan Baharudin, country manager for Accenture in Malaysia. Uh, and this is the first episode we're having a guest on. So Aswan, um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of how long you've been in this position, uh, you know, what kind of... Uh, career pathways that you took to end up being the country manager of Accenture? I'm the country MD of Accenture. I think I've been here for about seven years. I honestly didn't think I would last uh, this long because um, <laughs> everybody thought, said to me that Accenture is very uh, uh, cutthroat. tough. Yeah, cutthroat. It is cutthroat, right? And actually, that's the first thing I tried to do when I, when I joined Accenture initially in, on uh, March 1st, 2017. Mm. Um, I said uh, the first thing I need to do is... Um, try to understand why people are such, right? So what's, what's driving them, right? So um, it's been a phenomenal journey. But before that, so if I start from my childhood, right? So I have a degree in economics, but um, I started coding when I was 10 years old. But I started at 10 years old, I, I won uh, awards and competitions. Actually, it started because I wanted to cheat in games. Ah, because it was that long ago, okay, right? Okay, okay, so you can okay. kind of hold memory blocks yes, and say, hack. hey, you know, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you can say, hey, you know what? I, you know, you, you don't have... Um, internet last time don't have can so so what I try to do is hey you know what can I create my own stuff right so I freeze the the, the money credit so that ah, uh, okay, so that's okay. how I started so I yep. say how do I do that and then yeah. I started doing that and then that got me interested and mm. um, kind of a sidebar so like 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 championship manager edition one you can put in money some, ah, yeah that's yes, right yes, yes, yes. money yes, exactly yes. right <laughs> so today you've got games uh, for some, I'm a big FIFA guy uh, on uh PS5 yeah, okay, now okay, before okay, PS4, yes. PS3, PS2. I've got all the consoles you can imagine. Sure. And uh, but now you can start and say you can actually specify what's your starting budget. Ah, you can okay, put okay. a billion. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Then you so, can buy all the top players. Yeah. Then that's right. Uh, but it, but it's a bit boring lah. Yeah, bit boring. Bit cheat lah. Ah, bit, bit boring because you start beating everybody from scratch. But mm. that's how it started. So, um, so, so on that on that note, mm. why did you study economics rather than computer science? Because I like reading. Okay, so my father said, so at A levels, right? So I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Just mm. like a lot, lot of people, I guess. Mm. I was not the science guy. I was not that good at it. Okay. Um, so I was not that great in mathematics either. Okay. So at maths was like, oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> right? okay. Yeah. So then my father said to me, he said, but you like reading newspapers. You like to comment about the economy. You like mm. to read politics, mm. right? Uh, although I know you like to draw and all that. Uh, a bit creative on that side, but I think you like the kind of this stuff more. That's why I started. So my A levels, I did uh, economics, uh, politics, and accounting. Oh wow! Okay. okay. Yeah. So it's kind of okay. a yeah okay. diverse. So it's enough. It's good for business lah. So you can kind mm, of yes, look yes. at numbers, understand yes. the you know the yeah, politics. You can read the balance sheet. That's uh, you right. Can, uh, you can know what, what, how to comment on GDP figures and yeah. things like that. So yeah. so before Accenture, I was in a big four firm. I was mm. a partner running. Uh, sales and business development for Asia Pacific. So, so I'm kind of in that track. I've always had. I was worked for multinationals all my life. And, and did you, did you continue coding while you were in university uh, as a hobby, or you that sort of like died down along the way? So where I was certified as a J2 Java programmer was actually I started working in Bank Bumi London branch for a while. Okay. And then they were implementing a core banking solution from a company called Terminos, which is a Swiss company. Okay. And then after the implementation, so I was there. So I said, so I had the, uh, the ability to code. Mm. So the guy said, can you help? I said, yeah, of course. Uh, but then through conversations, actually after a couple of weeks, I was the project manager. Can you believe that? <laughs> Just okay. fresh out of school, you know. Okay. Uh, project manager. And I was doing all the coding. And after that, the mm. company offered me a job. So, so to, to contextualize things, uh, this was uh, in the... 1997? 19... Okay, okay, okay. Oh, so that time was also the time of the financial, Asian financial crisis. Yeah, I was, unfortunately, I wasn't here. I was there. Um, and then, which, which was a good thing. You, know, you got a job a, there, yeah. It was a good thing. I had a job there. And then after that, they had you know, the euro conversions, the bond conversions. Sure. So I did all of that stuff. Uh, in Europe, so the 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 Y two K bug sure, that yes. never happened. So yes. so I was, you know, waiting there while you know the fireworks were going, and mm. I'm thinking in the office like yeah, something's gonna happen. Something right? gonna crash, you know. Uh, nothing <laughs> happened. Yeah. So after we went home and we just partied all night. But <laughs> but but that's how I started coding again, mm. um, basically. And then after that, 
um, when I came back, I joined, uh, actually joined Arthur Anderson. Mm. I had some offers when I was in UK, lah, but Arthur Anderson, uh, so at the time, if if you focus on Arthur Anderson, you know, it's, it's shut down now, yes, right? Yes, yes. But, yeah. uh, it was split in two, yeah. It was split. And, mm. and I said, so so why us not, you know, the other PwC, mm. etc.? He said, because it's closer to my house. Ah, I couldn't okay, differentiate. Okay, Honestly, okay. when you when okay. you when you joining one of these, you you couldn't quite differentiate, sure. right? Yeah, this so was in KL. In, KL. Okay. In KL. So, yeah. so that's when I eventually came back. Okay. So, so let's let's uh, sort of like roll it back a little bit because one of the questions I wanted to ask you was your own uh, experience with digitalization. Because uh, mm. this episode we're going to focus a lot on uh, uh, the digital transformation that companies and the country has got to go through. Uh, you know, we'll maybe you can tell us how has your experience with uh, digital products been from a uh, a personal standpoint. We, we don't talk about the work part first, just personal standpoint, the way you interact with your friends, family, you know, that kind of a thing. I, I think a lot uh, has changed. You know? Actually, the, the more, the bigger it is, the older you kind of declare yourself to be, I guess. But <laughs> uh, but I, I tell you, a lot of change. For example, right, I think the interaction with people have changed. Mm. I would argue, actually, let's start with, it's a, it's a bad negative to start with. This ability to socialize is less. Even when you go social media, but it's social less. Social less. Okay. Yeah, okay. so so it's quite interesting. But, you know, last time when you go to your auntie's house, your grandfather's house, whoever's house, right, mm. You the first thing you look at albums, right? You, ah, say, yes, nah, yes, you, yes, go, you start comparing, yep. hey, remember this, who's this, and mm. et cetera, right? So mm. you, you kind of have that, you kind of miss it because today, you got all your photos and your phone in the cloud, right? Mm. When you actually discuss, hey, when was this? You kind of, the only time it appears is on, perhaps on Facebook that says memories, right? Mm. Or Without, maybe on Google Photos, you know. If you yeah, Google, that, you know? Google Photos, it, it does quite good mm-hmm. things, but, but it kind of appears on yours, but it doesn't share with everyone, you know. Okay, I'll, I'll push back and then I'll ask a question. <laughs> so I'll push back by saying that, you know, having access to Instagram and social media, you know, and, and all that, allows me to keep in touch with my family members and extended family even more because yeah. I just follow them on Instagram and then, you know, when I see them, hey, I saw this on your story, uh, you were yes. out partying, don't know where, uh, you don't think I didn't see it. Right? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So so actually, there's a lot of great stuff, right? But if you think about this, the stuff I miss, uh, for example, you've got the, the photo thing. Mm. You could also... Do you remember Yellow Pages? Yes, yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> I kind of miss Yellow Pages. Yes, yes. It's like it's like browsing, you know. Hey, yeah, yeah. what kind of services exist? And, and okay, let's look for the plumber <laughs> or you know what. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but not just that. You kind of go into other services you've never seen before in your life, right? So you kind of, I kind of miss that bit because you get thrown a big, yes, you yes, know, yes, yes, a big, yeah, big, yeah, it's, yeah. it's incredible. Now it's so yes. much easier. Yes, everything. Right, is, whatever you want to find, right? There's so many websites that does it. There's so many tools. It's, the internet is incredible, hmm. right? Uh, but but then, like, like for you, do you let's say for your family, mm. do you follow your kids on social media? You know, like you know, stalk them on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, like uh, some, no, some uh, okay. it sure depends, right? So do the they kids, block you. <laughs> no, they don't block me, uh, oh. but I don't go find either. But it keeps come turning up in in my feeds, right? Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, um, so my daughter is very hot on on Instagram, on on TikTok, um, and she's got lots of friends. So friends, I've got. Some of them have got millions of followers, mm-hmm. right? So she's in kind of that group, which is great for her. Mm. Uh, but as a as a father, right? You go, hey, you know what? You know, <laughs> you know, never mind. Um, <laughs> you, you do you do your own thing. Um, okay. But you know, she does the 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 more. Uh, the, Relax stuff on Facebook. Ah, I mean, okay, they don't okay. really use Facebook to be honest, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so Instagram and then there's TikTok. But yeah. Instagram a lot on stories. I think they probably post less on their own, uh, you know, actual posts. No, right? that's right. It's stories. Uh, so yeah. it comes and disappears, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes you want to click or not. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, sometimes I click. I mean, they all. I got one daughter, one son. They're both good kids. Um, so, but they are, they are well connected, lah. So, so my daughter. Actually, when uh, she started using the Mac when she was four years old, and she could stitch up videos of having conversation, two-person conversation with each other on the same frame oh, at wow. four years old. Um, so Is she I, going to be a consultant like you? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I, she has the ability to do that. Sure. Right? So so she, she'll make all sorts of stories up and then be the primary actor and then eventually rope the, the little brother in uh, to play that part. But, but they are so digital from so the get So fast, right? Yeah. So fast. The editing, you know, the, the filters. But themselves, right? They're all mm. learning on YouTube, mm. right? So Very intuitive. Yeah, intuitive is, is, is incredible. So so all of that um, has changed, you know, even 
uh, learning, for example, I mean, of course, COVID, we can, can speak about it later, but, but COVID mm. was, you know, a big catalyst in terms of digital learning. Sure. Because, yeah. you know... Not uh, a choice. Yeah, a lot of us had to, you know... Pivot. Pivot at, at, at the time. Yeah. Right. Banking. So, yeah. Banking. Uh, other kind of corporate services. LHDN. <laughs> uh, yes. 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 Well, we'll we'll come back to that. Uh, you know, because uh, I think uh, that's part and parcel of the digital transformation that the country and uh, uh, corporates, uh, both big and small, are facing. Uh, so you know, thanks for sharing about your personal digital journey, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to our conversation with Aswan Baharudin, Country Manager for Accenture on the Are We OK podcast. We're talking about Aswan's own uh, personal digital sort of like experiences. Uh, and now really want to pivot into the kind of uh, digital transformation that Accenture helps corporate undergoes, uh, undergo. Uh, and one of the things that I can remember from uh, you know, talking to my friends in Anderson Consulting or AC at that time when I was working at BCG was that everyone had to go through this uh, ritual of getting trained in enterprise resource, resource planning or ERP. Uh, that was the initial bread and butter of uh, Accenture. Well, do you remember those days? You know, or were you, are you familiar with that kind of ecosystem from uh, the early Accenture days? I wasn't there, but yes, actually the, the, a large part of DNA still exists in that space. Um, and that is also um, the primary uh, driver or pivot point for many organizations because you have to change because the way you operate um, changes. Yeah. So, but uh, we have changed uh, quite a lot uh, sure. uh, since then. So, ERP, maybe for those who don't know, it is sort of like uh, looking at the back end of. Uh yeah. So, ERP is when you, know, you run a business, um, especially big business. Uh, we look at how you deal with your finance, how you deal with uh, human resources, procurement, procurement, yeah, fulfillment. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there's a so the core back office engine runs on ERP system, yeah. right? So you, when you're a small company, you don't really quite need it, uh, but as you grow, you do need. You have different versions of it, but as you integrate more complex business, that piece becomes extremely complex. So maybe you can sort of like explain to the listeners how did uh, Accenture shift or pivot. Uh, growing from ERP, where you were systems implementer using things like uh, SAP software and things like that, to slowly pivot to other areas of digital transformation for your clients. Mm. So we started with implementing the back end, so yeah. to speak. Right? That was then your entry point. Entry yeah. point. Yeah. Then somebody had a bright idea, I guess, that was in the 1990s. In the 2000s, somebody had an idea that says, hey, why do we also run that? <laughs> so, yes. so, so that's the big outsourcing shift in the two thousands, right? Uh, that uh, gives you good recurring income as well. It does. Mm. It does. So, so it started uh, that, and then hey, then Accenture moved, you know, um, into hey, you know what? Why don't we get into the business side? So, you know, let's go into even plant management, for example, in, in even in manufacturing, in mm. oil and gas, energy, etc. Right. Um, so, and then. Hey, I said, so, so, so somebody said, why don't we also get into the front office, right? I want to drive sales as well. Sure. So yeah. why do we run the entire company? <laughs> so you create the product. Uh, we, we, we deploy the, the technology. And the manpower. Uh, right, and the manpower. Mm -hmm. So you just get creative in your product development, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, as a, as a concept, it's easy, it's, it's challenging, but um, it, it made sense, right? But, but having said that, Right, so so then you can see where this is going, right? Yeah. So where's the next uh, frontier? Wait, be before mm. we even go into that, mm. um, you know how? What were some of the challenges in terms of trying to scale up, so to speak? <laughs> uh, you know, from just doing ERP, um, you know, uh, implementation to running some of the back office to running some of the front office uh, services. Yes, there are some similarities, but there will be some differences as well. So how then does Accenture as a company uh, globally and maybe to, to, to the context of Malaysia more specifically, how then do you, you know, expand the kind of uh, uh, service offerings in, in that space? Well, it's not easy. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine, it's, but that's what you guys yeah, are paid the big bucks for. It is not easy. <laughs> it is not easy. It is... Um, it is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I think a lot of battle scars. I think that I think the firm and its people have gone through 
uh, for many years. Mm. When whenever you start something the first time, mm. right? I think when you sell it, it sounds great. Mm. When you have to do it, it's like, oh my god, <laughs> how do you actually do this, right? Yes, uh, <laughs> I was also a consultant once, but on the strategic consulting side, and you know, when we got into some of the implementation uh, projects, uh, you can see the. The, 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 the pain points are being Because the PowerPoint is really pretty. Of course, of course. <laughs> so, so when you actually try to do it and say, it's like this, uh, for example, so there's one time, not in Accenture, but somewhere else, right? So uh, one of my bosses said to me, you know, we're doing strategic procurement tomorrow. So as one, you're eight, you're training the procurement guys. I said, say what? What's, what's procurement again? <laughs> <laughs> so that was, you know, but that's the reality, right? Sure. The, 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 the night before, literally. Islamic banking, I went to Thailand and says, as one, you're the expert. So, Somebody gave me a book in Slavic Banking. I read in the plane, read all night. Next day, I said everything I could. I started speaking Thai to distract them. <laughs> and then spoke about Islamic Banking. And then the CEO said, Kun Aswan, it's okay. You're good. Sit down. <laughs> so so I said, thank God. You know why? I knew nothing else. <laughs> that was it. But we still closed the deal. But the reality of it is, um, you have to leverage people. Um, so I think we leverage a lot of people in industry. There's also a challenge in actually marrying people from the industry into the concept of consulting and implementation yeah. mm. because I think uh, folks from industry are only exposed to one particular sector. Yeah, yeah. so one style maybe. You know, one way to skin the cat, yeah. right? But there's so many. And then when they get together, it becomes a challenge, you know, because... You yeah, know, different uh, expectations, culture. Different size, and, yeah. different culture, different environments, right? So actually, when we had to do that, so you just imagine for us, right, as a business, training and learning becomes absolutely key. Sure. It's, it's, so you just imagine, right, before I talk to someone about a particular technology, for example, right, so mm. I've got to read that first. Mm. I cannot be talking and say, so, but the clients are always smart. So where have you done this before? Uh, well, <laughs> here I, I will try to sort of like uh, uh, help defend the consulting industry and, and say good things about it. Uh, in a sense that, at, at least for Accenture, what I heard was uh, the process of training, you know, in terms of, uh, let's say, ERP exposure uh, was very robust. And once you get that kind of, uh, you know, very good foundation for you to be able to scale up into other process-oriented uh, digital transformation, it becomes something that's quite intuitive. That's right. So, in fact, from, I think, the old school of method one of Accenture that was, you know, very famous is regimented. Mm -hmm. Um um, so one of the clients um, said, you know, the difference between Accenture and others is that you're industrialized. Mm. So, and, that, and that's key. Yeah. Um, because sometimes when, uh, so when, when you do work, you pitch, you base it on whoever you can get in the particular project mm. as a pitch or as a, as a person driving it. But the reality of it is, you know, through the years, how Accenture has grown. It's now 750,000 people mm. that's worldwide. That's amazing. Yes. That's, they were the world's fourth largest employer. It's incredible in, in size. So yep. in order to get that, sustain the business, you've got to have the right processes, right? And right tools, uh, right frameworks and architecture to enable all of this to happen. It doesn't or never happens by accident. Sure. And I'll, I'll come back to some of the challenges of growing uh, the scope and the scale of the business uh, later. Uh, but maybe let's uh, you know, go to, go to uh, one part of your transition into Accenture uh, going into Accenture in 2017, what made you want to take up that challenge of uh, you know taking this position in what was supposedly a very cutthroat environment? So, you know, when you look at the world, uh, and of course, I was I had the fortunate thing of being a avid gamer, <laughs> right? So you see that time what PS two three or oh I started PS one two three okay. four I've PC, got PC PC also PC a PC I built PCs my own so I'm the I'm that guy that okay uh, FPS RTS a uh, first person shooter FPS or? all okay okay all okay. the above so okay. I play all sorts of genres okay. I Doom uh, one two oh, three of four course. all that <laughs> okay okay Wolfenstein Wolfenstein yes <laughs> so, yes yes so, that, 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 <laughs> so it's okay it's okay yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. so <laughs> so I did. Um, all the VAMs. So then you realize, right, the, the speed at which technology and the graphics and how quickly it moves. And you know the one thing that un, the Unreal Engine, for example, mm, before, yes. right? The, you look at the water in the games, right? How real the that physics. is. Yeah. So mm. how that works tells you how advanced technology is. Mm. And then when you look at, at the world, right? And I decided at that point in time that PowerPoint doesn't change the world. <laughs> <laughs> Consultants may like so, to think so. Consultants so, may like to think so. so. But it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't. So you have to move from PowerPoint 
to the doing. So when it comes to doing, how exactly? Not the high level bullet points, just you know, five nested things yes, under, yes, right? Yes, yes. So how exactly, when exactly, who exactly, mm. right? So so you have to do that. But then what I realized also at the end is technology enablement is everything. Mm. Without that, you can dream of the best process, but it still takes time. That's when I, it, it kind of the Eureka moment and says, actually, which is the best company that does that combines consulting mm. with implementation run, right? And, um, yeah, and to be able to do real transformation. That's right. That, I mean, that was it. So that was not too difficult, to be honest. Okay, right. So no brainer from that perspective. Mm. Uh, but I think the challenge would be then after you got in, and then later on COVID happened. Uh, then that kind of uh, you know uh, challenge were you know new challenges were to you know that you would face. You want to talk a little bit about how you know how uh, you as an individual as a country manager cope with that transition and how the uh, company as a whole uh, dealt with the uh, the, uh, the the pandemic. Fortunately, I was uh, one. Of the, I'm one of those guys who can go high level, can go real detail, roll up my sleeves, and I actually so do 30, it. So thirty thousand feet, three feet. Yeah, three feet, less than three feet even. <laughs> so, so I ran a cadence every morning, 7.30 every morning. So from the point of trying to get people safely home, because you have people, we've got expats, we've mm. got you know, people visiting, etc. Everybody wants to return home. Mm. There are no flights. Mm. You've got to make some calls you know, f- to, to get some flights, uh, yeah. for example. You've got that making sure that everything's okay to the point that the contracts are still running yes. because the clients still expect it regardless, yep. right? Uh, to, to thinking about how do you do this remotely? So we've had some, for some clients, right? We've, I remember at a time we had to buy 500 uh, dongles oh. from the telco, okay. right? Because yeah. they've got to bring their work home mm-hmm. and not everybody has the sure. sp- you know, speedy connection that you kind of need to go real, real time, right? Yeah, that, that, that time 5G wasn't deployed yet. No, it's not, <laughs> right? So, so you just imagine, so worrying about, you know, and, and then telling the client is secure. Mm. Mm, yes, yes. It, it's yep. not telling the client secure, so how do you know it's secure? Mm. Right, yep. so the inspections need to come. You got small windows opportunities, lots of conversations with the clients because um, the way I put it is, uh, we had a lockdown, but not every country had a lockdown. Sure, yeah, some were more locked up than others. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's 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 very different. And your your global company serving global cl- uh, global yes. clients. Yes, yep. and and we had to deliver no matter what the contract says. You know, you could uh, you could argue many things lah. Sure. Right, uh, but no, we 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 did it. We transition. We transition immediately. How we work with each other, of course, you know, other companies also. You got Microsoft. You got Zoom. So everybody came back yeah. with strong offerings. Right, it's not perfect, mm. uh, but you know, remember in the olden days when we ha- when even when you were BCG, right, mm. you had conference calls, not video. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Yeah. It's not, so yeah. even today, so Only you have Oracle and others came in later. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's just right. Yeah. So even today, um, it's it's still a culture where when I get on a, a conference call, I would switch on video. Then when yeah. I switch on video, then everybody switches on their video, yes. yeah. right? Yeah, but and COVID it's, changed that, right? COVID yeah. Changed but, that. And it's a massive cultural change, mm. right? So so and and people say that's great, but I think we all know it wasn't because <laughs> there was no time to rest because every, everybody expects, right? So when you're normal meeting, you'll be five minutes late maybe and say, yeah. sorry, yeah. traffic, yes. lift, whatever. Mm. When you're on the call, you know, no where, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> so my last call finished late. Mm-hmm. That's the yes, best yes. you could do. Well, well, that means that the law of uh, back-to-backs. <laughs> Consistently yeah. back-to-backs. And, and worse still, right? Worse still, I had to come up with um, an order, so to speak, right? That says no calls after seven, because people thought they could. Because they said, "Well, what are you going to do anyway?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but you, but you kind of, you have to be the adult in the room and says, "Actually, no, stop, guys." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven o'clock, family, Netflix, makan. and chill. That's right. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll come back right after this to talk about two things. Uh, one is some of the details in terms of the digitalization. Uh, challenges that companies had to face and how Accenture helped them. And then, uh, you know, the other part that I really want to talk about is Accenture's own expansion of services into other areas that maybe you guys don't know about. So we'll be right back after this. Hi, welcome back to this special interview with Azwan Baharudin, the country manager for Accenture here in Malaysia. 
Uh, Aswan, you know, we talked. We were talking about the pandemic just now, and uh, you know, one of the things that I'm really interested in from a corporate strategy and also implementation perspective is how did you uh, find the space uh, to discuss with your clients uh, in terms of the kind of aggressive approach or maybe not so aggressive approach that uh, different clients would want to undertake in terms of digitalization to cope with COVID. You know, so putting on the country manager hat, you know, during that time, what you can remember, what, what can you tell us? I think the uh, one thing I was quoted, and I, and I said this quite often, was I said, you can be irrelevant in a blink of an eye. Yep. <clears throat> so that's how I start. Mm -hmm. Because the I think for Malaysia especially, I think a lot of our industries are oligopolistic or monopolistic, a duopoly or, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. So so it's mm. quite protected. Yes, I tend to take things for granted, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, when, uh, as uh, as someone who's, who's in the fabric of Accenture globally, mm. you can see what the other countries are doing and how fast they're moving forward. And it's very, it, for, personally, it's very hard, you know, when you see some of the countries we were ahead mm -hmm. again. Singapore, forget it, they're so far forward, right? In, in you some can't, areas, yeah. They're kind of lapping you, you yes, know. Yeah. So so I said, well, okay, maybe not them. But then we look at Thailand and Indonesia, mm. right? In many aspects, um, not everything, mm. um, they've surpassed us, right? But even Indonesia, you know, you know, it's a sleeping giant, right? So, but I think without, it's already woken up. <laughs> yeah, but we, even without fully, right? They, mm. They're here. They, I mean, the nothing in the rear view, rear view mirror mm. and then you look up hey, wait, hey, I'm sorry what's what's happening yeah so as an, as an example you know now I sometimes will book, book my flights through Traveloka for example because mm. they're all over the place they give very good service uh, in fact better some of our local players mm -hmm. right <laughs> yeah, yes yes I won't comment but yeah they got some good deals and, yeah. and they, they move very very quickly mm. um, so so from from my perspective when I speak to CEOs um I guess there's always a reluctance and it's a bit slow mm -hmm. because I think the, the basic uh, perception is that, Azwan, we've always done it this way. It's always worked. Mm -hmm. We're always getting our profit, right? We, so we're not going for hyper growth. So we are not regional. So how, how the, then do you try to convince uh, you know, CEOs, uh, you know, chairmen of boards and even board members uh, you know, that they they need to undertake that digital transformation in terms of business survival, in terms of wanting to, uh, you know, keep up with your competitors and, and sometimes even, yeah, trying to innovate. Okay. So I'll tell you a story which is not quite digital. Okay, okay. But the essence is the same. So I went to see an insurance uh, CEO many years ago and as very nice office, etc. So as long I went to see his office, so you got a whole bunch of people, I think eight people mm. with their with their PCs, not even laptops, sure. doing all sorts of stuff. And I say, what are they doing? They're doing uh, data cleansing. I say, what's the, pro what's the problem? Mm. I said, you know, because I'm not able to cross-sell. And I said, why don't you just outsource this stuff? Do you have somebody else to do yeah. cleansing? Mm. I said, my board doesn't allow me to. I said, <laughs> I said, why? Uh? I, so, so, so he said... Uh, Security, is it? So, so no, there was no good reason for it, like you <laughs> asked me. But so he asked, so, so, um, so how, many, uh, how many customers uh, have you got? 5,000? Okay. okay. I think it was 5,000 then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And I said, so what's the problem? So, yeah, because they said they are, they are, um, the gender is wrong, address is wrong, mm -hmm. age is wrong. So I can't cross-sell stuff to them. Mm -hmm. I said, really? Yeah. So, but it's like how much? Like 10 ringgit a month? He said, much more than that, Azwan. I said, really? Yeah. So I said, if you give me 3 million mm -hmm. and I give you 600 million return, does it make good investment or not? He said, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I said, because 5,000 multiplied by 10 ringgit, mm -hmm. multiplied by 12, Mm, is 60 yeah. then I exaggerate lah. Mm. multiple by 10 years mm. six, yeah. 600 million yes, yes. so you pay me 3 million you get 600 million back you think the board will approve uh, the board approve <laughs> you see what I'm saying so, sure. so you start a story like that so you have to look at the upside so I think there's a real nervousness in terms of cost cutting because people say you know Aswan we're really low cost country mm. we're low cost mm. Yeah, but low cost, you know, some of the toll operators it took so long to get rid of people also, right? So, sure. so there's a, there is good. So I, I believe in that, right? So you got to take care of the people. I, I believe in that. But then there's also an ability to, uh, to do uh, greater things, for example. Um, 
for example, one of the things we did was actually this one I think I can say lah. Uh, for my TNB, mm. right? You know the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I'm, so, a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a user. Of yeah, yeah. So we helped them build that. Mm. They had initial app. Mm. Right. We helped them build that. We changed all the UI, UX. Mm. We on the etc. Mm. And then guess and it's what? It's a very good app. Very user friendly. Very. You seamless. can budget. Your thing now, you know, your electricity it gives you alert. You, you can do many things, right? You can do all your bills and then suddenly, you know, you don't have to wait for the post anymore. It's there. You can pay it on the spot. In fact, there's probably more things coming on that platform, you know, um, moving forward. But you, you think about it, right? That has completely changed. You think about it. Collections. Mm. Mm. How easy is it uh, to collect? You're collecting far quicker. Yes. Right? Because reminders come up mm. and then you pay. You know, in, in the past, right? Where's that, where's that bill again? Yeah. Where's that bill? And then, you know, it's really faded because it's like the photocopier people. I don't know what the, what's the one. Uh, the, the, uh, yes, the, 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 the plasticky material yeah, that they have. Yeah, the, based on heat or something. Yeah. You know, so, it, it, so it, it, it's not that. So, so when you think about it, right? Uh, an ability to reach out to your customers upfront all the time, mm-hmm. quickly, and understanding their pulse is, is absolutely critical. We've got many more examples, for example. But, but you think about, you know, if you don't move and somebody else does, then what happens? Sure, then you'll uh, find yourself uh, lagging behind with uh, the threat of uh, being uh, closed down. So I'll give you an example, um, uh, not Malaysian example, but uh, you know, did you, use, did you used to use Skype at one point in oh, time? Yeah, right? yeah, of course. So, and, and you know, that kind of company, you would have thought would have been right for transformation and upscaling during the COVID. But suddenly, you know, because they were slow, Zoom came and then took over. Right, and then yeah. they, they, were, they were left behind and hardly anyone uses Skype these days. I mean, you know, it's... It's an asset that's lost. Okay, uh, can I apply that during COVID also? There's a lot of stuff we could have done during COVID when people were not using it that could have been transformed today. That then, that could have been fantastic today. Uh, but we said, so why didn't you do this stuff then? Any examples that uh, you no, can no, reveal? Okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to. But, you know, you can see that a lot of infrastructure uh, mm. service providers are suffering that, that problem, right? Mm. So you say, hey, you know what? Why didn't we do this then? Mm. So actually, there's a lot of opportunities for change. But I think people were so obsessed in in surviving, number one. Number two, in almost uh, almost prolonging the stay-at-home period, mm. right? So then, you know, um, a lot of things they could have done. So some companies have done it. Um, not It's not that everybody, not all Malaysia, no, no. So some are very, very good. It depends on the CEO and the management, right? Um, so they could have done it then, but a lot of people, you know, our attitude of wait and see uh, kills us, you know. Uh, yeah, for some companies, yeah, but um, I'm I'm also glad to say that for others, especially in the manufacturing sector that I'm more familiar with, because of the downtime they had with COVID, uh, many of them actually decided to embark on you know Industry 4.0, uh, in, you know those kinds of transformation that they didn't have time to do before that, yes. and they started applying for grants that METI you know were previously providing that. Uh, you know the take up rate was relatively low, so there are you know some. No, no I agree, and, and and it's it's a leadership function. Mm. Um, so a lot of other companies have just gone far advanced because they could say so nobody's what are you going to do, right? For example, mm. right? Um, e- even uh, for example, in let me give an example for for Thailand, uh, we help, I think, stand a Tung Eng Tung Eng app, which is basically an app that looks at. Dis- distributing targeted subsidies and cash sure. during the COVID period, we stood it up in five days. There are many things you could do if you wanted to, mm-hmm. right? Is that, you know, I think there's a, I think the challenge is, you know, let's not rock the boat is, I think is a big theme. And I, and I think that's fair enough. That's fair. But I think, um, you know, there's a point where there were a lot of experiments happening. Mm-hmm. It's like Gen AI today, like, lots of experiments, but nothing real so far like, in, in at least, th- there's some we have done globally, but people are still, it's, it's in the lab. So, hey, maybe we could have, you know, well, let's try this, that or the other. But it's the same uh, with a lot of digital related stuff, right? So those who have gone ahead during COVID or just even after COVID just accelerated that process mm. are far more ahead today than their competitors. Any examples that you are able to discuss or, or highlight in the Malaysian context? I think if you look at, uh, you know, I think one of the biggest uh, petroleum companies in the country, sure, let's just sure. leave it at that. Yes, yes. Um, if you think about, I think, you know, I think several CEOs ago, he had the foresight to think about, you know, oil price was down. There are many things down. Said, this is even before COVID, you know. And you think about why would you be doing this when your coffers are getting low mm. uh, in, in cash? But 
the idea was well it prevented from going worse mm. uh, and or uh, when when things get better they become they accelerate right so so what happens is in this particular client we did the digital strategy right but then but then uh, how do you fund for the projects right mm. because the price of oil is down yeah. so we say you know what we'll save you money so we did digital procurement so you know Accenture globally does i think global procurement more than our malaysia's gdp in mm. terms of value sure. globally you know yeah. not out of here out of india yeah. But so we know what the best prices are, mm. full stop, right? So you're not just your MRO stuff, no, you're actually specific engineering related okay. stuff. Huh? So this is what we brought. So so we said, um, so That's if how you fund the, uh, yeah, the so we said, we, we, we save you X billion, will you spend some money with us and then where we transform you, this, that, or the other? Mm. Said, the answer is yes. So we saved quite a few billion for this particular client. And then guess what? So in order to bring, I mean, they've got, many thousands of employees, many, yeah. many thousands of yeah. employees, right? Different verticals. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to see how many because sure. people know who exactly. Yeah. But then anyway, so so the point is, so we had this thing that, that did um, um, a transformation, a cultural transformation using digital. So we develop an app that looks like Spotify that has people playing uh, games on it every okay. day. So gamification of certain yeah, HR processes. gamification is a yeah. is a big big deal. Not just in this uh, in in this uh, mm-hmm. company, but also another. So if you think about uh, you know some of the um, oil and gas companies, right? You go to the forecourt when you put petrol, and some people come smile, do stuff mm-hmm. for you, right? Actually, there's a lot, a lot of that is gamification, you know. Ah, okay, okay, so okay. so w- when it w- when it works is when leaders, their big big biggest bosses mm-hmm. also participate. Mm. and there's a league table so wow, okay, so it happens okay. uh, a lot so then suddenly the notion of digital to, to say that digital is the right platform to even drive change mm. is there it's proven then there is um, um, actually another one which I which I thought was really really cool and I thought is applicable to perhaps government you got 1.6 million um, civil, servants. civil servants right so I said um, uh, so what we did was uh, talent analytics for ah, example, so okay. so then the the problem with with when you do your performance reviews right every year, mm-hmm. right? So unfortunately, there's still a human element into it that says, yeah, this boss supportive of you, mm-hmm. good lah, you lucky you lah. Boss not supportive of you, mm-hmm. you problem lah. <laughs> so even whatever the facts say, it's a quite a problem. So how do you take the human thing out of it, right? And says, so what we did was we looked at ten years worth of data, right? Mm-hmm. I doesn't matter what form data. Right, structured, non-structured data, mm. and we kind of put it through machine learning, and we drive through and say, your your best uh, uh, successor is the following. Next best is this as the other. Mm. Your next best job is here. So you be, you are able to rank and also profile and. Uh, and yeah. we can say any disruptions, any mass resignations, any key positions you can rotate, because the machine learning has already mm. driven yeah. outcomes even before. But of course, decision is still human. But the data is presented in a way that says instead of you deciding what the criteria is, it decides upfront based on the skill sets in your experience and, and ambition, etc., etc. Takes away a bit more of the guesswork that used to be in the past, Yeah. No, that's right. So because in organizations where le- the bosses change a lot, mm-hmm. you know, you work hard, mm-hmm. but where does where is it seen, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So you I need think to institutionalize those kind yes, of processes. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yep. So you got that too. Okay, so we've, uh, you know, that's the corporate part of things. Uh, we'll come back and then talk about government transformation, which is uh, something that I'm sure you guys will be very interested in. Uh, come back right after this. Welcome back to the Are We OK podcast. We're talking about digital transformation of government as well as uh, corporates uh, together with Aswan Baruddin. Let's talk about government transformation. We've talked about uh, corporate transformation from a digital and non-digital perspective. Uh, in, in terms of you know the kind of work that you've done and you've seen Accenture do with governments, not just in Malaysia, but around the world, uh, how, how hard it is, is it to convince the government to get onto the digital transformation bandwagon, so to speak? I think... <laughs> you can answer this carefully, but mm-hmm. I think... Th- to convince them that digital is great, I think that's not hard. Mm. Right? I think it's an execution issue, but sure. uh, because it's fragmented, right? So there's 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 many divisions, there's 
different ministries, different agencies. Th- there's too many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, trying to say, hey, you know what? And then because there's the IT is also across ministries as well. Mm-hmm. So everybody's got their own turf, so yes, to speak. Yeah. Right? Which is fair enough, right? It's just like any big organization who says, hey, you know what? I want to centralize. Oh, <laughs> all sorts of th- problems come to play. La. But I think um, the notion of of digital government is there. It's been seen everywhere around the world. We've seen it in Singapore, mm. right? Uh, but then it's also, I think what's key is actually communications. I think that communications is key because I think if you say, if your mandate says, do like this, mm. then say, but why, right? I think the benefits of digitalization of government allows for single government uh, view of uh, the rakyat and Rakyat's interaction is also single. Mm. So because if you go for, you want to do different things, you got to plan for the whole day, can mm. uh, uh, Lots of agen- uh, government agencies and government departments have got their, it's, it's great, you know, it's improved so much, but. Yeah, our passport, for example. Uh, yes, passport that, no, but that's right. I mean, that's mm. that's really, really good. Mm. And then I think the staff that Anthony Lok is doing it. Uh, yeah, Ministry you know, of Transport. It's incredible, mm. right? Say do. Mm. Yeah, but so we, you can have your driver's license now and also your road tax on your app. You yeah, know, that's right. Yeah. No, but but we need a bit more of that because we need to say, hey, you know what? Um, is there value in queuing and waiting mm-hmm. or not? <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. So if that's yeah. not, so can we reduce the uh, process of uh, re- repeating the processes that we go? If you do some things, right, you've got to submit this again and again and again. It's a lot of paper-based work. So you bring up a very interesting point because, uh, you know, uh, Singapore, you mentioned Singapore. Singapore has this thing called SingPass, uh, which yes. is their national digital ID. Yes. And that has been in place for, I think, uh, 10 years, uh, more than 10 years. And Accenture, uh, from what I understand, uh, also helps out with some of the uh, you know, uh, implementation and also management processes. Uh, and Malaysia, you know, recently we've started embarking on our own national digital ID. Um, why Why do you think, you know, uh, we are so sort of like behind the curve uh, on this front? Because if you have a national digital ID, you have uh, a single sign on to, you know, ideally all government services, you have proper verification, you have, uh, you know, your biometrics that are linked to this uh, national digital ID. You know, it seems like a no-brainer, especially you know if let's say you've experienced it in Singapore. Why, why those kinds of challenges in Malaysia? I think it's a matter of construct. Um, okay. I think mean? if you think about in Malaysia, right? So there's there has has been in the past no clear owner. Hmm. So you got different ministries, you know, touching the national there's technology piece in there that enables lots of not just government uh, uh, so you can have a single sign on for government services for example yep. but you can also have private sector services you 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 can uh, EKYC for example yeah. to be able to give access to private no, sector exactly yep. exactly mm-hmm. but then you have to I mean there are a few things like right? you need uh, a, probably a law that enables every ministry to just access the data or you exchange the data sure right so you need kind of that that clear and you need a maybe an architect architecture that says for example in singapore they got sing pass cop pass and my info mm. so in 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 uh, the cop pass is the corporate version yes, exactly yep. right so the sing pass so you individual, can, yeah. yeah so individual you got your license etc but then you can go to a bank and say hey you know what i want to apply for a credit card mm. so because you've got your sing pass i'll give you access i give you yeah. access but then in order to to give to understand your credit worthiness in like today you got to submit your EPS statement la, your income statement la, you got your bank statement right yeah. when when you've got a single source of data for example uh, um, in Malaysia for example you, you I mean there are many sources of data la, but if you can think about in Singapore they have got something called my info they can extract the right data from right database yeah, you're using APIs to pull data from that's different right sources. and you say yeah. and and there's a there's a security piece here that says hey you know what um, we are going to, this bank has requested this data, mm. the following data to be released to the bank. Do you approve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least, you know, it's not just giving for the sake, you know, yeah, you, you have you're ownership. Giving, you have just ownership. you have ownership, you give permission. So I think you need to, uh, you need to put what the use cases are, mm. right? Because there's a lot of, there's a huge benefit sure. uh, to this, right? Um, so from even for companies, right, in, in order to access uh, services, I- even people to access grants, for yes. example, right? I know where you're from, your B40, M40, you know, because you got different databases, for example, right, that you can use. So actually, um, 
there is there has to be a single point of view what this is what is used for a single architectural blueprint that makes it a bit easier um we have had i think several changes in government where this story has uh, changed mm, multiple times out, ah, so a bit difficult la. so yeah, he said who owns it changes yeah. And all that, yeah because the person who started it is probably not there anymore sure. or not the same ministry so it's fair enough but i think we need to have a single view of what is for mm. how it will benefit the user so don't say oh if you don't do this you won't get that yeah. i think you need to say if you, if do, you this, do this what you will get you this get yes can you tell us a little bit more about how essential helped uh in in this case the singapore government uh, with singpass and the larger ecosystem from a implementation standpoint so what we did so it was actually uh, singpass per se was running already before um and then what happened was a uh, 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 a public private partnership where it didn't quite turn out uh, so well why because when you have this kind of stuff um there is going to be an issue with innovation okay. because people is going to just you know maintain sure. maintain costs right and, and cut costs as much as possible so they changed and so they said you know we're going to do this ourselves so yeah. then i think 2013 2014 uh is when we came in we participated in tender uh, and we won it and we developed this um this app um and then if you think about this app you know it even helps the blind right so it's so easy to use very intuitive yeah, yeah. very intuitive um and you can use it for anything i think the key thing was the shift from having a a a kind of an online website digital identity kind of thing to do online transactions versus having a mobile sure. app uh was a big change and then of course you know there are many options for authentication right uh, uh two factor authentication etc but biometrics yeah biometrics so so i think the singapore government chose the facial recognition yeah. right because then most phones have f- phones anyway and then um you know they've kind of proceeded with that so so i think for malaysia the consideration is also fingerprint uh, iris face whatever lah you know there's there are many but um, that also adds to cost lah maybe that's the way to put it mm. so so we've run it and and it's always it's actually run on prem i think we're in the last legs of just completed uh, the migration to cloud It took a while uh, i think at least 3 years and and, and um, you know we the implementation was one adoption was complete another so so the lessons learned uh, very early on was that so if you say it's going to run you open to everybody actually the system cannot handle the search it was never designed to handle that search uh, a number of uh, active concurrent users yeah. so there was a lot of lessons learned uh, because it's it's not cloud at the time uh. sure. so so you got overload yeah overload right so yeah. you got low balances so not enough so so it was too many and so of course you went and you down you guys are the, were the troubleshooter yeah. <laughs> yeah, you went down there's so many issues but then the other bit also there was a lot of uh, challenge around adoption because so that they had to do or you know the community um, centers yes. etc you have to go there to register to yes. ask for help if let's say you are older person and yes. all that kind of stuff so the easy ones are the young ones very easy fast yeah. right but then you got to make sure that the the people perhaps you know in the in the case of singapore now gives vouchers for CDC subsidies yeah so for like example yeah. right so the elderly etc need to have that access so and i think that the change management perspective is also incredibly important so you need to let people understand why um how when you know so a more comprehensive way of rolling things out uh, yes. that would include some brick and mortar stuff some uh, digital yes stuff. you have to have both yeah. um you you can't just go fully digital it doesn't doesn't work like that we all have phones but sure But don't you think that if let's say Malaysia is rolling out the national digital ID now and we are uh, given the fact that we have uh, so much opportunities to learn from other examples whether it's Singapore or India and the fact that we can actually have access to a lot of these services through the cloud now uh, you know through perhaps uh, you know uh, people like uh, Accenture or other consultants um, you know what what kind of advice would you give from a systems architecture from a implementation and rollout perspective uh, to the people who are doing this uh, digital id project actually i first we start the purpose lah i think the purpose is incredibly important mm-hmm. so if you think the purpose is purely for targeted subsidies you will leave a lot of people behind mm-hmm. because there's also a lot of people they will not get those subsidies sure. right and perhaps you know, the the way it's going is also asking for a lot of information in fact the the ideal way is i'm not giving you additional information you already have my information yes. use that so i yeah. think that's a starting point i would point. just give you approval to access that information yeah. whether it's epf lhcn 
You give, okay, yeah, so sure. Like I get yeah. access to that. Then, if you're not registered, you register somewhere, lah. Mm. You go register for, you know, last time got Brim B40, right? You you go register somewhere LHDN, even though you're not paying tax, you have LHDN yeah, file, yeah, uh, right? Your, your tax ID, you know, things. Yeah, like that. yeah. So so you can have that. So you're in the system, um, uh, somehow, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so but then but then you you have to have the objective. Objectives got to be clear, mm. right? And then the, the use cases, yeah. use cases, right? The the benefits got to be absolutely clear too, mm. right? For both sides, for for. Private sector, public sector, and uh, individual. Yeah, yeah. Right. The individual is right here and consumer. So how does that work? Yeah, and so, it may not just be just for the targeted subsidies. It may be for other kind of uh, government services that you want to have access to. Yes, yeah. yes. And then the and I think the other bit is you know maybe perhaps is um how many waves you go lah. So you cannot go everybody because Singapore okay lah. They got small. That, yeah, easy, small. Easy, yeah. We've got you know maybe in in Malaysia we can start off with uh, the Klang Valley first or some of the urban areas. And That's then, right. Uh, slowly. And there's also up. something to be learned in Sarawak though. They've got their own Sarawak. Yeah, uh, they have pass, their own uh, right? Sarawak, uh, sort of like uh, Sarawak ID, uh, Sarawak ID, yeah. also payment system. Payment, yeah. yeah. So, so they are quite advanced. They've had it since 2017, I think. Mm. So, so there's a, even in our own shores, there's a, sure. there's a bit of a learning, right? The technology has changed, but the objectives should be similar. And I think um, the, the 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 key lesson learned is you know adoption. How because you can have the best technology and you don't have a adoption strategy. It doesn't work. Yep, that's the rollout strategy. <laughs> yeah, right. So, 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 what is it, right? So, even with us, when we when we spoke to various folks uh, in in Malaysia, right? So, what's the right strategy? So, so I, I I made this mistake, right? Uh, so we go. Uh, I said old people last. <laughs> so the guy said to me, "Excuse me," mm, yeah. yes, yes. but it's true. So you got very savvy folks as well, mm. right? I'm not that young either, but you know. Mm. Uh, but you have to say, okay, who needs it most gets it first. Mm. Right, so there's then this convenience factor, for example. Uh, so I think you go second, right? So I think that's how you do it. But there's so many lessons learned, right? So one, I don't think you should take so long, so lah. But maybe do some uh, prototype stuff and then uh, you know stress test it. Uh, yeah, roll but, it out and then and don't see. make it so complicated. Ah, okay, okay, yes. Yeah, yes. Don't have to fill in 37 fields or things like that. <laughs> ah, that one separate. Okay, that one, that one separate the discussion. Okay, so so uh, l- l- let me just uh, go on to the to the yeah. to related issue. Uh, because right now, you know, uh, you mentioned essentially 750,000 uh, employees worldwide. In Malaysia, you have about 10,000 employees. Uh, thereabouts, more, yes. More thereabouts. And you also provide a range of uh, services. I know that, uh, let's say, you know, for something like the National Digital ID, uh, you know, you guys are able to pro- provide some of the even uh, support, uh, s- support uh, services ecosystem, including call centers and the like. So... Um, you know, can can you walk us through the expansion in terms of the services that Accenture as a whole uh, is providing now compared to before? So I think um, large, okay. So th- for the bulk of it, uh, from technology perspective, it remains the same. But then you expand it to data and AI, mm. um, because I think they talk about you know the data lake. I mean, we had this conversation for for eons, right? And it's the same thing. But the reality today is the, is is how do you leverage your data? Structured, unstructured. Last time, you know, the problem is you need to have structured data. Then you see the clients say they don't have structured data. It's in papers, this, that, or the other. So, but now the difference is we have generative AI, we have LLMs that is able to process that. Absolutely data. right. Yeah. So, um, um, we've got that. But, but I guess the the new stuff uh, that we bring to the table uh, is something called Accenture Song. Mm. Um, so that's uh, now become a big business. We're now the world's largest digital agency. A right. digital agency from the perspective of like marketing, a digital marketing, yeah, marketing, yes, correct, marketing, mm-hmm. branding, mm-hmm. Uh, market positioning, etc. Right. So, so sometimes, so so okay, let's do the simple ones first. So, if you think about the ads that you see, you know, some of the digital latest, ads, yeah. yeah, digital ads, some of the coolest ads that you see recently for Chinese New Year actually done by us. Ah, ah. Okay, okay. are you able to say which? Client or something with green color lah, ah, but you know, okay, okay, but okay, okay, okay. it was done by us, and okay. I think that went down really, really well. Mm. And also targeted in terms of the different kind of uh, yes you know, uh, market so we, segments. That correct. So we do it. So we're going to do that for you know the 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 high raya next etc etc Deepa Valley. So we've we've kind of got that, and I think that's something, 
you know, that's not easy to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, that takes a lot of creative talent, but that's what we've added. So we've done acquisitions in the past. Not We've done one acquisition here, two acquisitions in Indonesia, one acquisition in, in, in Thailand even. So this is how we've grown. We kind of buy, we chomp up a company, if Accenture is like one every week or something. It's 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 just massive. Mm-hmm. Um, but and what you it to does- to fit them into the huh, culture. So, so, so what it does is, okay, so you got really creative folks. And if you got machine, remember I said before, we are machine. Right? Process. Yeah, yeah, process. It's like, it's regimented. It's industrialized. Mm. The arty folks just have an allergic reaction to that. Sure. And so we've had to, we've had to learn how to live with. Uh, Maybe be a bit more flexible and a also lot rigid. more flexible, a lot more flexible. So I think if you if you think about uh, our ability to uh, change customer experience, so song the prime the primary um, uh, thing is changing customer experience. So even from either simply designing a website app, um, the experience of a store like the Apple Store, etc. Right. So you just imagine everything that the the consumer or the individual um, experiences right even on web vr actual VR, mm. there's so many the stuff immersive that we do kind of experience, immersive yeah. stuff right so in fact we even did a, a career verse we tried that you know so we we hired people using the metaverse mm. well that didn't turn out very it's well okay. because you know learn from your mistakes we learn now because uh, people expect you know some Fortnite gaming <laughs> you know platform ready, something ready player one <laughs> yeah ready player one but it wasn't of course I mean it's, it's just starting right so trying to have to create the universe trying to enrich the the environment etc that wasn't easy but also not understanding what people actually want but but we continue to experiment right so that's that's key but then um uh, managing uh, reputation, reputation management is also something that we do. Yep. Um, so we don't talk about it very much, but it's you know it's important for us to keep you know privacy sure. in play, right? Um, and if let's say there are certain attacks or certain crises uh, that that a company brand is uh, facing, you guys will go in there to try to uh, have mitigation measures and strategies. Yes. Well. So so imagine there are s- sometimes there are, I think a couple of shows on Netflix that mm-hmm. um, that has an impact, right? Mm-hmm. So if you know, we, we could help with um, mitigating some of the impact. Uh, maybe there's that. some environmental sort of like issue in some places. <laughs> yeah, so ah, yeah. Also, also, yeah, yeah. also because the narrative, right? So, so the narrative has to be clear. Sometimes we are not, uh, the narrative is not unified, is not consistent, mm. right? It's me- a bit messy, yeah. Very, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. So I think the you think about, you know, if, if only, if I had a wish, we, you know, I think, if we had a communications command center that drives, because you said just, uh, you know, I think earlier we had a sidebar conversation about, you know, promoting Malaysia, you yeah, know, yeah. as investment destination uh, overseas, for example, right? If the messaging is the consistent narrative. and clear, right? Narrative has to be clear. Why do you come to Malaysia? Because of this. Don't give me 10 things. Give me three things, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So so then actually it's, it's clear. So then there's some noise, this, that, or the other. Because our politics, uh, our economy, also lots of noise. Yeah, currency. Doesn't matter, you know, just focus on, uh, you know, well-trained workforce, uh, linguistic ability, and then, uh, you know, uh, cost-effective. Uh, I, I would place. argue, the, the one I would argue is that I think Malaysia's graduates are of high quality, right? doesn't matter like overseas, local, because um, when you are growing as a business, so we got now a lot of people, right? When I joined last time, 1,003 people only. So we've grown by a lot. 10X. Um, uh, yeah, 10x almost, right? So, uh, so if you think about India and Philippines, right? They've got their own value propositions, right? Yeah. But then, having said that, right? So, if you go to other countries, you are going to be one of, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of customers mm-hmm. in one location. Of course, it's industrialized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes. But there's also um, there's a lot, so a lot of clients in Malaysia that that, that come to Malaysia. Right, they like Malaysia because of our multicultural uh, environment, and also not too big, not too small, not too. Big. That's right. That's right. So we, we don't promise that we'll be able to staff twenty thousand tomorrow. Well, I, it's not the promise, but the promise is, hey, you know what? If you want some attention uh, and some capabilities, and for example, we have been proven to be able to scale. Mm. I think it's important, though. Sometimes we talk, 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 but you know, for us, we've been able to scale. I mean, that's actually it was that amount in six years. Mm. So you just imagine, you know, I had to go down line by line to say, okay, what's the recruitment strategy? Because at the beginning, uh, we used to say, oh, this is all the job descriptions, right? We give to 10 uh, headhunters. You give us what you got, lah. but guess what? Every headhunter game come out with the same CV. Mm. And you go, so which one do I choose? Mm. Right? Yeah. 
then maybe you have to learn you have to apply your own machine learning to try to go and solve so we did things. so that's what we're doing now okay, so okay. yeah this is what we do now because otherwise how, you cannot scale right and on top of that when we have to import certain skills for example you've got to use technology in that process right if you use a manual process huh, yeah, yeah, you yes. know the client wants to mm. mobilize tomorrow <laughs> yep. you cannot say I can get you people in three four months, months. no <laughs> three months only hey, two months to work, do work permit you know <laughs> so three months they got to pay off their guy they got to move mm. so not so safe what either mm. so usage of technology and and driving what we've got you know in, in terms of this is 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 Uh, incredible. The, the one I'm really excited is it is it is brand uh, uh, marketing marketing ops, Enhanced for example, that uh, drive. You know, when you look at uh, when you look at ERP, right, or, or other systems, you drive efficiency. When you look at um, uh, um, uh, outsourcing operations, typically look at cost, cost reduction, yeah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We are looking at increasing your top line. Yep. Right, so yeah. uh, greater customer acquisition, growing the market. Exactly. So that's what we want to do. So again, completing the full thing, right? Ah, okay. How we started. Yep. That's where we're at. Yep. So I, I think that's a good way to sort of like wrap it up. Uh, if let's say you want to sort of like give a sort of like a conclusion in terms of uh, the kind the kind of company you see Accenture as now, and maybe looking down five years down the road, what kind of company it'll be five years down the road? What 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 do you envision? I envision. Uh, the firm being part of most if not all of the rapid growth expansion of companies in Malaysia the and only also in way the region maybe the region we are already starting to do okay. that so we are already doing that okay. so the the point is you know it is not a hey i'll do this for you you pay me money for the labor to do it the future is let me do it you give me a cut for your growth mm-hmm. then we'll talk then i'll in over invest in the business because the returns are mutually beneficial. So it's a partnership. You have a skin in the game. Absolutely. Okay. So with that, I think we've uh, gotten a very comprehensive picture of the kind of technology uh, company uh, that Accenture has grown into. I think it's been a fascinating conversation. If you want to hear more of such conversations involving the corporate world, uh, please uh, put it in the comment section. Thank you very much, Aswan. And uh, we... Are bought brothers in solidarity <laughs> in wanting to see greater digital transformation for all sectors of the economy in Malaysia. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for having me. Thank you.